in a ball game, never on to Kansas State. So I just told him in the locker room. So get ready to go. And in Kansas. Biggest thing I think we've had out without anybody hurt. And, uh, doing it, but it's, this is the fourth game this week we talked about that we needed to do it, and we've got two hard games left. So. Gary, did you see improvement from your defense simply because two are You ask me a question that you don't really know the answer to. We gave up 52. But you saw when I put the last group in the game and we scored, that was the group that a lot of them played the game a week ago. So when I say two seniors came back, a lot of a lot of confidence, a lot of a lot of things go on when you put people on the field. So got to get ready to play. Is this your best game of the season? Uh, I don't know about that. I think probably offensively last week was. I mean, it's, I mean, I just watched the gentlemen. It's a seven to seven, and there's still 11 minutes left to go in the first quarter attacking Baylor. It's, there's some good offenses in this. Got to get ready to play. Every week you just try to win by one. Okay, we got a little luck here today. Obviously, I don't ever like being on this side and dead in locker rooms. It's kind of like when the kid was down at the end for them. I mean, it's, I've, already been, I've already been dealing with that already, so that nobody wants to deal with that at all. So it's, it's hard. Somebody's kid. You feel like you guys did an overall good job of containing Bird throughout? Uh, no, we, you know, we talked about make, running to the sideline, making him cut back, and we did two or three times. We didn't do it, but I mean, it's, we were better. We were better this week at handling him than we were SMU. And so, you know, like I, get, I keep telling you guys, and so we can just get it off the record. You know, I, I made mean, a lot of you guys saw a comment. That had nothing to do with Texas. I had to do with media, and I'm getting tired of watching shows telling us we can't play football, defense or offense. Didn't have anything to do with Texas. And so, for all you guys that made the Twitter, Twitter rounds and did all that, had to be and that's about TCU. The only person I can compare and control is TCU. I got two guys back. I got Davion played better this week because he didn't, he hadn't, he hadn't been out for four weeks. My two of them. He'll play better next week. Hopefully, we'll get Latham back and we'll get another pass rusher. We'll get ready to play. But it's, it's a long season. We get through next week. We're halfway through. But it's, for us, we didn't tackle very well defensively. So if you're asking me, that's two weeks in a row. We got to tackle a lot better. And if you looked at us, we weren't that good in third downs on offense. But what I told them down there is if you act like this is a big deal, and you didn't think you could beat them anyway. We want to become a veteran team, then become a veteran team. We played an early game, so if you go to bed at 5 in the morning because you're out doing then, you, then we, we, we misused what we, the advantage we got by being able to be done and get ready to play and go forward. That's what teams do. They want to win. So, am I happy you guys don't think I'm, I am? I'm, it's awesome. Got a chance to win a ball game. Got a chance to be five and zero again in a second week where nobody. There's a bunch of people who didn't think we'd win the ball game. So, do you think maybe your guys convinced themselves that they can win like? Well, I tell you one thing, and I tell them another. It's your job to find out what that is. <laughs> I mean, it's, the bottom line to it is, is it. You know, coaches are supposed to motivate. My job is not to motivate you guys. My job is to motivate them. So, Gary, who is saying that you guys can't play football? Huh? Who is saying that you guys can't play I watched football? it all morning. Really gripping you up, like, oh, yeah, I mean, you can't be a playoff team because you can't play defense. I'm not trying to be a playoff team yet. I'm just trying to win the next ball game. I want to make it all about that. I just want to get, now I want to get to six. I'm not going to lose perspective. Remember, I was the guy that uh, got left out last year. So right now, that can't be the final goal. The goal's got to be to win more than you lose. And right now, that's what I'm trying to get accomplished. We're down eight players on defense. And Colby Lissby didn't play today. Slanina didn't play today. I mean, she were on the thirds. So for us, we're just going to count our blessings and see how it all works.
the high respect for Charlie Strong and his staff and the group they do. Um, both of us have been on the ends of all of them. Last time I played here, I would have been rain delayed, and they got after us. I mean, you just you got to get ready to play and try to get through it and try to stay healthy and try to get to the next ball game. That's what my job is. Do you ever expect Texas to play the way they did today? Well, I, no, I, I don't know if I would expect that, but you know, I think. Um, I think people underestimate Trayvon Boykin. I think people underestimate, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, a lot of people still talk about what's a gimmick offense for. Well, just keeps my job, just trying to be whatever I gotta be. So it's, but I mean, we got, we're gonna play better teams. We gotta go on the road two more times before we get a break. And so there's a lot of good football left to play. But uh, for us, everything today was about us. But I said, I said a comment last week at the end after the ball game. These are the kind of ball games last week that when you get the right break, sometimes they lead to great seasons. And you gain confidence. And so sometimes kids don't believe, believe you, young players don't believe you until uh, it happens to them. You've been telling them, here's what's going to happen to you if you don't do this. It's kind of like Jason Barrett. I told him his first ball game against Baylor four or five years ago, you better start practicing or here's what's going to happen. And sure enough, he gave up three touchdowns. Now, he's a first-round draft choice later on in all of it, but sometimes they, they just, they got to be shown. They, they, don't, they don't believe him. So, uh, I think we'll gain some, I think we'll gain some advantage. I think, uh, you know, I think it helped. That was, we were lucky enough. I think it helped us that I didn't practice last Sunday and we got the legs back. I felt in the SMU game, because of the scramble quarterback, we tried to chase the quarterback around all week, and I think what I did is I ran, I ran their legs in the ground. And I said, look, we're going to play a scramble quarterback, but you're just going to have to wait till Saturday to play. I'm gonna, we're going to just run what we run and do the things we need to do, and we'll go forward. And uh, getting to a back and Davion playing better, the thing that they give you is they just give you stability. You mean it looked like a whole different defense line out there when I watched us go through team takeoff than what it looked like for the last four weeks. You know, you don't get these bright eyes that look half scared to death because they've never been in this situation before in their life. And you know, by the time you get to game six, seven, or eight, they're not young anymore anyway. Our freshmen you can't be freshmen anymore. And our two linebackers got to tackle better. Those were big backs today, and we told them to tackle legs, and they didn't believe us, so we'll try again next week. So that's... Hey, how did you describe what Josh Dawson gave you guys to the You know, he just guides. Well, it's just the confidence level him and Trey won't have. Dealing with them. I mean, they're, it's, from my perspective, it's just fun to watch. You know, very few times, it's kind of like I coached Brian Urlacher, um, Daryl Washington, you get a Josh Dodd. Very When you get a chance to have a special one, what you need to do, it's kind of like I told, I think Coach Comby said a frog club. I said, you know what, you need to take a step back and you need to enjoy Trayvon Boyd. They don't always come, they don't always come around. I mean, yeah, will we win all our games? I don't know. But you know, in coaching, you don't, you get glimpses. You get glimpses when you get a chance to be around really good players. You get glimpses of what you want to do with and how you want to do. When you get around one that you really need to appreciate, and I think I'm as bad after my years of coaching, I'm, I've been probably as bad as anybody. Always worry about the next game. Always worry about doing the right thing. Always worry about getting it going again. And you just don't take a step back and just go, just watch him do that. Now, I don't know if we'll catch another ball the rest of the season. But the thing is, it's just, it's just fun. You get a chance to stand up, especially when you have a guy that, you know, that went the route that he ran. You know, where I, was, I had to walk on back here, and then I got put on scholarship, and then, you know, he's out the whole two days because of a hamstring. He was out all spring with a broken hand, and so, you know, from watching him do the things he needs to do, and that's with Colby listening to me not getting the ball game. Well, you don't have the home run threat on the other side, but I thought Josh Storr did, and we got guys playing backed up. We're not a healthy football team, even on offense. So, I mean, we just we just need to count our blessings and get to the next ball game and hope that we do well and 
and go from there. But it's it's a uh, it's hard to manage a season. When did you get a sense that Josh was one of those guys that you had to step back? And you know, I didn't get that sense till about the first couple ball games of last year. I think Minnesota when he went up and climbed up and caught that one, and I said, number one, I thought it was incomplete, and then they raised his hands for a touchdown. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, we didn't know what we were, we knew he was kind of, you know, he had some athletic build. We didn't know what we were recruiting when we were recruiting Turpin. And I still wasn't happy with him on a couple times. But he just gives you that smile and moves on. So it's hard to get mad. I mean, how do you, how do you get mad at somebody that's a freshman that goes back with 10 guys running down at him and smiles about it and ready to go do it again? I mean, it's, Pisses me off to be honest with you. Because I want him to act like he's I want him to act like he's he's listening to me. And not always does he do that. So is the key to stopping her just having fast players? Oh I don't I don't know. You know it's, I got enough problems just judging my own guys. You know, younger co younger quarterbacks have a struggle with seeing coverage sometimes, seeing the rush. Ours have, everybody says. You know, I think down the road, you, it's, you know, Charlie and his group, they've got, they've got good coaches. They'll, they'll figure out what they got to do to get him free and what they need to do to do some things. I think the biggest problem they have with their game plan is, six, is they felt like the right tackle was out. And I think they were, they were worried. They didn't run a lot of their offense throwing the ball today because I think they were worried about protection. And so... You kind of get you get that because they kept, they stayed with a tight end in the backfield to be watched a lot until the end of the ball game. So whether it was in the backfield or on the line of scrimmage, and most of it was to our left, their right. So I think a lot of them can't right now when the big tackle comes back. I think he gives them a better opportunity to throw the ball around and do some things. And, and I just asking my opinions, but I, in, in defense of them, I think they were trying to minimize what was going on. How much of your focus was trying to keep her out? A lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it. Sometimes we wouldn't have two guys spying him, but we could. Even in our zone blitzes, we wouldn't even drop a guy. We, we gave up the zone to make sure that we were watching the quarterback. And he still got out. He, I mean, he's a phenomenal athlete. I mean, it's, to be honest with you, he's a phenomenal athlete. And he's going to keep getting better and better as he goes forward. You know, one of the things that you get, we recruit all these kids. And, it's kind of like the kid who was laying on the side of there. You know, when you've been in the state as long as I have, you, you, you know all their parents. You know, you know them whether they came to TC or they didn't come to TC. You know all of them. So it's, you want to win, but on the other side of it, you still also feel for what they go through. So We're just glad we're five now. I think that's what we are. So then again, we, it seems like we played 12, or we played a season already, to be honest with you. My wife would agree with you. <laughs> Do you feel like you're progressing at the kind of rate that you normally see throughout a season? You get better and better each week? I think our confidence level, I could see on Sunday. You know, I don't know if it was school, so many young guys on defense, but even starting to teach them the game plan on Sunday, SMU, and uh, Texas Tech on defense, because we were younger. Obviously, they were older. It was like they were in a cloud. It's like, you know, this is simple, fellas. And they just, but this Sunday, it was like, got it. And so, now, will they next Sunday, tomorrow? We'll see. But we could tell they were going to play better on defense, and they were going to play faster just because they got where we needed to. And like I told you, I put, Trayvon, I put Trayvon Howard last week in a bad situation. I tried to ask him to be a nickel guy and be a linebacker. He was the guy that got picked on. And so really, some of the stuff that happened last week was my fault. I mean, it's, and if you don't tell him that, you don't take blame for it, then why should he trust you the next time? So from us, I tried not to do that this week. I put Dan Denzel back in a situation where he was an older guy and he was the adjust guy or strong safety. And uh, he handled it a lot better. Nick Orr had a fumble recovery early. How do you see his game? Well, yeah, you know, Nick's been great because, you know, he played all, he played safety um, all spring. And because the corner's going down in their development, he's had to play corner. It's really hurt us because, really, with Trayman going to, to linebacker and him going to corner, usually we have 9 to 11 safeties. 
And we're at six. I was kind of walking. So in a three safety system, that's not the ideal. It's not the ideal situation. You only need two deep. To be honest with you. And that hurts you in special teams too. So um, you know, the loss of George Baltimore and then Kenny Iloka, I mean, it's, you, you, your numbers are down. Then you move two guys in positions. You're, now, Trayman would have probably went back to strong safety. He'll still play some. He did. If we played nickel, that's what he would have played. But I played him to the wide side, and he didn't have to do any adjusting. And so it was, it was just an easier game plan for them to handle. Uh, but you know, it's a difference of a, if you just look at Patrick Mahomes. Uh, when we played him, you asked the question about her. We played him in the middle of the season, and then the way he played at the end of the season against Baylor, totally two different quarterbacks. And so I think you'll probably see progression go forward. We will reject as you, you know, get him into things and do the things they need to do. So it's Gary, this school has not had a lot of success against Texas historically. You have really put it to him the last two years. Did you ever think something like that? Oh, no. I, well, I don't know. I've never thought about it that way because I haven't been part of them. I'm not that old. I haven't been part of the 100 years. So I've just tried to be part of the last 15, to be honest with you. Um, but I would say this. I know it's like 58 and 59 was the last time the TCU beat Texas back-to-back. So, I mean, it's been a while. But I, I was not born yet. I just want you to understand, I was born in 60. <laughs> and that's old enough, to be honest with you. Even though I don't feel that old. We'll do two more questions for Coach. Have Nick or handled a lot for you, too, more than Yeah, he's, you know, you know for him, you know, he's, his dad played in Texas. Terry mm -hmm. Orr, so you have a guy that's... Um, obviously, this was a big game for him, but Nick's a really smart kid. So I moved him from corner, and he played free safety because we wanted to get uh, Kindred out. Because, you know, he's been banged up the whole season. He got banged up a little bit in the first half, so we just we kind of rolled the dice and said, look, let's move. And we put Julius Lewis in, the true freshman corner, played on one side, and Corey played on the other. And really, we held up the whole second half, except for the first series. Uh, that's the way we played the whole rest of the game. Nick moved until we, we substituted in those last two or three drives. So. Final question. Even with the, the muff punts for Serpent, what do you think is performance? You broke the record for Big 12, uh, for a Big 12 freshman passing. Uh, Let me tell you, y'all need to just be able to spend some time around Turpin. Man, I'm not sure he's ever met anybody he doesn't like, and I'm not sure he's ever had a bad day. I mean, he's always smiling. He doesn't have a problem saying he's sorry I screwed up, which it's hard for a freshman to be that guy. Okay? And so, you know, he was one of the last guys we took in the class. He's turned out to be one of the most exciting guys we've ever had here. So, again, I, you know, I, he's more like a curly. Uh, but his thing is, is, go to study hall. Go to study hall, Turbin. He smiles. Get the class, Turbin. He smiles. Don't fumble the pun. He smiles. Okay. Yeah. just sometimes they help you. You know, coaches, we all get all caught up in this. Whatever we do. And then you just get a guy and just kind of don't worry about it. I got it. So now I don't probably next one then he's gonna muff something and I'm gonna be really mad and then I'll never have anything good to say about him ever again. <laughs> right? So thanks, coach.